Good afternoon. For as long as I can remember, I've always been fascinated about education. My mother's a teacher, and so I spent my early years growing up on the floor of a classroom. But for me, it was a bit troubling because I realized that uh, the traditional educational systems were not catered to students like myself, creative thinkers who like to be outside of the box. So I started thinking about ways where we could revolutionize education. There's a lot of organizations that are very successful right now uh, using innovative concepts like flipping the classroom, which uh, is uh, it's a term that's used to uh, describe uh, platforms like Khan Academy, which uh, flipping the classroom is basically uh, flipping the work which is traditionally done in a classroom and it's sent home, and the work that's traditionally done as homework is brought into the classroom. So students would be assigned Khan Academy videos or lectures recorded by teachers to watch at home so that when they came to class, they could get individualized attention from the teacher or work in groups to solve problems. In the developing world, or Africa, where we've done most of our work, the, there's not a lot of education innovation. However, there's a great deal of techn technological innovation. So in Nairobi, Kenya, for instance, 74% of Kenyans own cell phones. The Economist recently dubbed uh, Nairobi, Kenya, the Silicon Savannah for its sheer volume of people who are using technology. What we seek to do is utilize this growing trend to deliver a flexible uh, and free educational platform to our students. Cell phone usage is so popular in places like Ghana where you can't even take a group picture without catching someone on their cell phone. I look at images like this, and it looks fun to me. It's a playground. A lot of you may look at it and say it's a junkyard, but to me, there's plenty of resources that can be used to hack, build, and create. Things like tires and inner tubes can be used to recreate devices, or even LCDs or CRT monitors. So we are looking to create an educational platform that will use locally sourced materials or junk to teach students. This student here, Foster Dorfer, is a student who, through one of our summer programs in Ghana, learned to, was introduced to software engineering. He continued to study software engineering at an internet cafe in the evening, uh, being taught over the internet by one of our instructors from Virginia using a platform called logman.com where they can basically share a computer screen. Foster has gotten so good at programming in the last year that he's getting prepared to take the AP computer science exam in Ghana in May. And it'll be the first time that the AP exam for computer science will be offered in Ghana. So we petitioned the college board and they're going to offer it for our students who are <coughs> ready. Additionally, using just random materials. If we find rope and pulleys, we can teach students about forces and distributed forces. So really finding any materials that are at our disposal and helping to show our students how they can apply it to solve real world problems. I'm gonna take a step back and talk a little bit about our history. So the project, uh, the, the name of the nonprofit is called Emerging Leaders in Technology and Engineering. It was actually uh, spun out of an undergraduate project that uh, I've created with a classmate, Clayton Dolan. And uh, basically, we were lucky enough to be awarded a $10,000 grant as part of the Katherine Wasserman Davis Projects for Peace. And we decided to use the money to buy science equipment. We literally got cardboard boxes and filled them with computers, microscopes, breadboards, anything science related that we could find. We stuffed it into cardboard boxes and bought plane tickets to Ghana. None of us had ever been to Africa. I'd actually never traveled outside the country. So if you can imagine a bunch of 18 or 19 year old kids with cardboard boxes piled high, walking into the mass that's Accra. But something magical happened. Within a week, we had set up a four week engineering and science summer camp for 60 students. So 60 students came every day for four weeks, some of whom walked up to two hours to attend our classes. We tried to focus on locally relevant issues, recycling any materials that we could find, so finding hoses and pipes, and using that to build a drip irrigation system for the school community. Um, they mentioned that water was a scarce resource there, 
and that they needed to grow crops. So we racked our brains together and said, well, why don't we build a drip irrigation system? We then modeled our curriculum around this and said, well, we can teach students about pressure and flow rate and all of those things, and building our curriculum basically on the fly around the locally sourced materials that we found. Fast forward three years. Three years later, we've now run programs in Ghana, Jamaica, and Tanzania, and Ghana in partnership with two universities, the University of Cape Coast and All Nations University, which have given us full access to all of their labs, materials, uh, faculty, professors, everything. And also in partnership with a primary school this summer in Tanzania. So taking it a step back, uh, instead of working with high school students, to teach just a basic engineering and science uh, exposure course to elementary and middle school students in Tanzania. We're very excited to announce uh, our upcoming program for this uh, July 2013 will be in Puebla, Mexico at the Anawe Research Center, um, which I'm really excited for because Anawe actually has one of the largest radio telescopes in the entire world, and our students will have access to not only the machinery, but the people who operate it. So we try to combat this idea of changing education through three different avenues. The first is increasing access. The second is to build a sense of community within our students. And the third is to affect the internal motivations of our students. We think that if we can affect change in each of these three areas, we can develop engineers from any community. This boy here is a boy uh, who lives in the village where we lived our first year in Ghana, a small satellite village called Obadan, which is the Engineers Without Borders village for Colombia. Um, he's a, he was a 12 or 13 year old boy that we just saw walking down the street one day. And he'd found basically old radio parts and created his own speaker box and he was in the process of designing his own radio. So if we can find students like this and give them access to resources, imagine the type of things that they can do. Community. We also try to connect our students to resources and people who can support their growth. So this is a student who attended the National Society of Black Engineers conference with us in Ghana, which is also attended by representatives from an organization called JICA. It's basically the Japanese version of the Peace Corps. So through talking with him and learning more about Asia, this student actually just applied for admission to a university in Japan. I don't know if he'll get accepted, but I hope that he does because he seems really passionate about that. And finally, internal motivations. One of Ghana's greatest thinkers, uh, Patrick Owo, who's also the founder of uh, Esheshi University there, says that the ability to create is one of the most powerful things that we can do for an individual. I think that our students seem to fully embrace this, understanding that by using their surroundings and learning from them, they can change the world. So everything from using recycled soda bottles or water bottles and uh, pots and pans and heaters, students can make uh, water purification systems. So everything from particular filters to what's down below is a little tank that boils the water and distills it. Uh, to solar powered radios, so finding an old broken radio, figuring out which wires need to be connected, and then connecting it to a solar panel so students without being able to afford batteries can listen to radios. Um, and this summer, we introduced a robotics, a robotics class using an Arduino microprocessor. So we use these robots to teach software engineering and electronics. Before I close, I, I want you guys to close your eyes while I tell a story. The student on the right in the red is Ibrahim Anusa. Ibrahim has been one of our greatest students. We've worked with him for three years in Ghana. Ibrahim lives in a household with about 13 or 14 people. Ibrahim had never studied science prior to working with us, but through our program became very, very interested in science and specifically computer engineering. So much so that after graduating from high school, Ibrahim got a job as an IT instructor at a local middle school while he saves up money to apply for admission to a university where he can study computer engineering. But what's the innovation behind what we're doing? Sure, we're using locally sourced material to teach students about engineering and science, but there's another part to that. Another part that is an idea that's be 
being developed right now into a product, which is to capitalize on this rise in cell phone usage in Africa and find a way to embed our curriculum into a flexible mobile platform where students anywhere can learn. So a student could send a text message to say, I found a bicycle wheel and a bicycle fork. And it could, that message could go into a database which could give the student not only a list of projects that they could build with these materials, but also instructions on how to build it. So they could say, I have a wheel and a fork, and the issue that I need to address is transportation, and it would pull up instructions for how to build a bamboo bicycle. Similarly, if the issue was energy, maybe it would give him instructions for how to build a low-tech vertical axis wind turbine. So our idea is to build curriculum out of local junk and figure out a way to inspire students to work with it to build and create. And we think that if we're successful, we'll find a whole new generation of engineers coming from developing communities everywhere. Thank you.